reason I use sugar water is because the bees are hygienic. They'll lick the sugar off, checking for mites, and it feeds them. And they're also stuck together, and they're not going to come stinging. So as you take your frames, set them in, just give a little wiggle, and they'll drop right down in. Now, as the bees, about crushing the bees, they won't. They'll move. You got to remember, there's bee space already in there that I've already created. I'm fanning them out, and as they start moving up, they're going to start moving up the frames to try to find that queen, right? Because we lost her. She's somewhere. I can smell her, but I, I lost her. Now, the one thing I'm going to tell you about the queen cage, and this is why you got to go slow. When you pull that queen cage out, it's going to have a little cork on the bottom. And you're going to take a little nail, or you're going to take your little leatherman, and you're going to pop the cork off the bottom. Don't jam it up in there. You'll just kill that queen. You'll shove all that candy up in there. And that's what's in there. They, they put a little uh, sugar candy in there, and they put a cork over it so the bees won't eat it. So when you take that cork off, the bees start eating that candy because they want to get to that queen. Because they got to get her out. Take the cork off. Check it twice. <laughs> Make sure you got the cork off, because you come back in two days and she'll be, or two weeks and she'll be dead, because she's not out of there, or they couldn't feed her, or they panic. So make sure you take those little corks off. When you get this all back together, spray it one more time. And as a beekeeper, I always dust it with powdered sugar. I have an industrial dehydrator and we make powdered sugar from honey. So I use powdered honey sugar back on my bees. But get yourself a flour shifter, put some sugar in there and sift it over the top and let them cover and let it stick. It gives them something to clean and it sticks to the bees and it makes them clean each other again and makes them more hygienic. Everything I just did makes the bees work on each other and not worried about you, they're getting food and they're going to clean themselves. So I'm keeping them occupied. That smoke's just going to suppress them down until they've had enough of it. And that's where they're going to come back out at you. What's your recipe on the sugar water? Uh, the sugar water is uh, one to one. 50-50 mix for the sugar. For my <coughs> honey, uh, I usually use, I, I, I have a recipe for 60 pounds of honey to make 125 gallons of honey. Right, it's got chamomile tea and it's got but honey I mean in it for your spray like bottle. 50-50. Same thing. 50, 50. One to one by volume. What's that? One to one, 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 to one by, by volume. volume. Whether it's weight or it doesn't matter. It's one to one. One to one by. Is there a is there a better time to I mean or like an ideal time throughout the day that you would want to introduce bees that you would want to I want to introduce bees between nine AM and two PM. Why? It's the hottest part of the day. That's when the bees want to work. Right? If you do it in the coldest part of the day, let, let, let's, let me put it this way. You got the cops at the donut shop early in the morning drinking coffee. <laughs> Don't kick in the door to try to rob it. Cops are there. All right? If all the cops are gone, good time to rob it, right? So if the bees are out working, good time to work the hive because all of them are gone. All right? You want to get at least both on the hot, hottest part of the day, between 9 and 2. If you're doing a lot of beehives, you might want to start a little earlier and it's going to be rough. It'll get better during the day, and it'll get rough towards the end of the day. And that's the same if you're just establishing them, saying the new... If you're establishing them, same thing. It has to do, they're raw. They're worshipers of the sun, right? So whenever the sun's working is when they're going to be working. It's like when I, when I talk about making solar water pumps to feed your bees. Solar works good because the pumps only work when the bees are working. No sense of having all that stuff operate when the bees are in the hive. So I use solar on a lot of stuff because it's the same operation. So now I've got my frames and everything back in for my packaged bees. I've dusted them with some powdered sugar. I'm going to put everything back together. And I'm going to wait two weeks. In two weeks, I'm going to come back. And I'm going to start with that hive, to this hive, to this hive. That way I'm working my way out of the bees. Work this one first. I come over here and they can stay over there. And I work this one, I come over here and they can stay all up there. Always work from the back of the hive. In two weeks, what we're checking to see if the queen's out of that cage. Same thing, I'm gonna show right up, and if you're smoking, 
You're gonna smoke the front of the hive. You're gonna lift it up, you're gonna smoke underneath. You're gonna let it sit, and you're gonna count. I don't like smoke, because I don't like my honey smell like smoke, and I don't wanna burn the bees' wings off. All right. So, <laughs> when I come the next time, I'm gonna let you know if the bees have been working and doing what their job is, you're gonna need one of these called the hive tool because they probably already started producing bird comb and propolis to start sealing this new home off. You're going to have to start prying stuff up to get that off. Propolis is uh, God's glue. It's the only way I can put it. It's, it's the colony's immune system. It's the, yeah, yeah, it's, it's, the, what it is. It, it, it's what uh, keeps everything sanitary in the hive. If mice get in there, all the bees will jump on their mice. They'll raise their temperature to 150 to 120 degrees. They'll cook the mice and kill it, and then they'll cover it with propolis and let the mice decay in the propolis, and it won't contaminate the hive. They encapsulate it just like a mummy. Yeah, they encapsulate it like it would a mummy, and if it rots in there, it doesn't contaminate the hive. So propolis is, is like, Sh like Sean said, Shane, Shane said, it's, that the, it's, it's the hygienic. And beekeepers have been using it like if you had a broken feeling fall out, you heat it up, you shove that in there. Stayed. It was the first filling. Helps with uh, gingivitis, halitosis, and even some of your own dysentery problems and internal problems. Very hygienic stuff. Very expensive to buy on the open market. Right now it's used for testicular cancer research to solve testicular cancer and weather protection. Get down the way. And uh, that glue is everywhere in here. So every time you pop a cover off or anything, you're going to be using this. This is also your bee spacing tool when you do your, your frames. So after you pull this off and you're popping it up, remember, spray. Right? You want to keep, you're, you're suppressing the bees from flying at you. So as you pop up this frame, just spray in there a little bit. Pop open the other cover and just give it a good spray and dusting down. That way the bees have something to work. Now remember, we're looking to see if the queen's out. It's only been two weeks. So I put my queen on this frame, so that's the frame I'm going to check. You take your hive tool and you're going to pry up the back. You're going to pry up the front. You're going to hook your tool around, slip it in, and pull it up. What you're going to look now, always hold everything that you do over the hive, because if there's the queen on it and you're doing this, and she falls, <laughs> Right. You're screwed. Do everything over the hive. So when you pull this out, you see that queen cage hanging there? Just unhook it and look to see if the candy's out. If the candy's not out and it's been two weeks, take a little nail, like a uh, rat, and just kind of pull out the, the, the candy. And she'll drop right down in the hive. And if you're scared to get the candy out, Pull off the screen that's holding her in. I try to save my queen cages because I use them. But if you don't care, just try to get out and get her to fall in the hive. And once she gets in the hive, she's going to be happy. If you don't get her in the hive, you're going to hear her chirp. The queen's the only one that makes any noise, and she'll chirp. So if you, ever you got... hear, ask, do you ever hear the queen? Do you ever hear the queen chirp? Have you ever heard them? Yeah. So when you pull that out, it's not in there. Verify what we're saying. It'll, you know, make sure the queen's inside. Yeah, you there. got a shill in the crowd. We know. Once, once you get that queen inside that hive, you can get rid of the cage. Now the queen's out. The second thing you want to look in this first hive inspection is to see in this nucleus area if you haven't put nukes in, to see if they've even started drawing out comb. If they're starting to draw out comb, hopefully in two weeks they've got at least two frames done or at least a really good start on two frames. And when I mean two frames, hopefully it's got like this one drawn out in comb and this one, this side drawn out in comb, not both sides. In, in, in a two week time frame, you're hoping that you'll see at least one board on each side drawn out. In four weeks, you're gonna see four frames completely drawn out. If they're working and you're feeding them like I told you to. If you're feeding them hard and making sure those jars are full, they're going to produce wax and they're going to start filling that out. So if they started filling out comb in these, you're doing really good.
you haven't even done anything. Really simple. Put your frames back in. Push the frames all to one side again. Take your hive tool, set it on the side, and evenly space all your frames again. Take your powdered sugar, dust the top of the hive, and put it all back together. And now you did an insertion of the queen package, and you did your first hive check to see if she's out of the case. Two weeks later, you're going to come back, and now you're going to look to see if any of that comb is all pulled out and if she started laying. If she's done that, that's all you need to check. Check to make sure you've got your sugar water full, because now you've been in there two, four, six weeks. That should be the last time you should really start feeding them unless you don't have any floor. Any idea what it looks like? Mm -hmm. So as you start pumping it through, Feel it like should this start filling is. up with fruit. This is, this is for the hot climate. Can I sting through that? Yeah, they can sting through even that. Yeah. Just like a hyperdermic needle. So basically in six weeks, you're going to do the next check. You're going to see if she's laying brood. You're going to do the same thing. One, two, three. Smoke or sugar. Take your time. Look to see if you see little white rice in the cells. If you see white rice in those cells, you've got a queen that's laying. And if you see white rice all over, she's laying really good and she's really freaking happy because it's, wow, this is awesome. If it's sporadic in nature, take this frame out, slide them all one way and put this frame in. Try to promote those bees to start building another nucleus part of this hive. Get them to work. Because what's happening now is she they're starting to make comb throughout different sections of this and she doesn't know where to go now. I want to build a nucleus. I want her to stay here and start laying in one section. So if they're building comb in different sections, she don't know where to jump to. Try to bunch up the comb. If you got it or where she's laying good or you see larva, Powder sugar, stick them all together, adjust them so they're all centered, put it back. Now you should be in here and it should be almost, let's say, we got Jack's bees here today. In two weeks, we put, we check to see if they're starting, they got the queen out. Two weeks later, we check to see if they're making comb. We've already got into it a month and a half. And in a month and a half, we've only checked it three times. So in that month and a half of these three time periods, you probably only spent working these beehives a total of four hours. So in about a two month time period, you've only been out here for about four to five hours. It's not that hard. I busted it up. That's incorrect. The first week you get them, you'll waste an entire week sitting there in a lawn chair staring at you. <laughs> 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 After that section where you have those bees and they're working and she's laying and you've got your double brood box going and you know she's working and you've got nectar and stuff ready to flow, put your queen excluder, put your honey boxes and you're going to do that system check every two weeks from now on to see if they're filling it out, filling it out billing it out, and if they're producing honey. So every two weeks you go in? Every two weeks. If you're going longer than two weeks, man, you're going to miss something. <laughs> you're going to miss that. Either something happened to those bees, the, the queen had something. Every two weeks. That's how you're going to help with your mite checks and everything, too, is every two weeks. What do mites look like? They look like little red dots, if you can see them. There's three different types. You'll get an internal mite and you'd have to get a microscope, you'll have to mash your bees, put in an alcohol solution and see if the mites are in there and organs. Do you that stuff? Well, I, I, I do that once a year, just to see how they are. Me, I don't have problems with mites. They're not a problem for me. I have mites in some of my eyes, they're not a problem for me. I put in drone comb and they take them out. Question. And it's time to eat. <laughs> Last thing. When you're all done, this is the one thing that she wanted to know. 
We went through a whole season. We took the honey boxes off. We spun. How do you start your next season? The first thing you're going to do is you're going to open your hive just like you always do, and you're going to split this nucleus down. So you got two boxes. By the next year, you're going to put this box down here and this box up here. You're going to rotate them. That way she'll start from the bottom and work back up again. Key, before you put the boxes like that, take these two out, pitch those because you're going to fix those and do those later. Separate and split the nucleus of the hive and put two brand new frames and make them work again. Now you're getting out the old crap and make them build a new. In a months or in a three year time period, which will be time to requeen, you've rotated all these out and you've made a fresh batch because not only on the top but also on the bottom because you're going to switch them every time. And that means you're going to rotate out all that comb and you're going to make them make it new and it's going to stay cleaner, they're going to stay healthier. And what happens is you're pushing brood on the outside to make them hatch and you're going to make them come back to the inside to work. That's that heartbeat thing, that's what keeps them warm, that's what they want to do to work. That's how you're going to rotate and get old comb out and propagate so your bees are healthier. That's something you're not going to read in a lot of books. That's how you're going to rotate stuff in and out. Because a lot of people say, well, won't they just refill this stuff back in? Yeah. Just like me putting food back in that old Chinese container. <laughs> They're going to get sick. Rotate that stuff out. And that's how you're going to do it every year. If you have any, any other questions, I'll be here all day. Email me. If you guys think you missed something, you want to know more, let me know. Advanced beekeeping gets into the mites. It gets you into check American fowl brood. And as you get more advanced, you'll need to meet someone to learn how you're going to queen and how you're going to make your hives propagate to make more. Right? You're not going to learn that from a book, man. You need to go with somebody. You need to go get stung. It's and better to learn hands-on. It, really it so is. I tell you what, Jack got some real good cannabis. Dry <laughs> cannabis here. <laughs> <laughs> the bees are loving it. Yeah. Give them the munchies. I don't know about that. Oh, yeah. the lunch. Don't, don't worry about him. He went through Colorado and said about black on the feet. <laughs>